welcome back. I'm really excited about today. Um, I've talked about our guest today uh, on the pad- podcast before as, as he's been a favorite of our guy, Four Color Zach, who's in the chat right now. And when I found out about him and I found out he lived in the same cities as me, I was really super stoked to learn more about like what he's up to and this cool music that he's making. So I'm hoping to either introduce you to him if you're not familiar or help you find out more about how he got here and what he's, where he's going, musically speaking, um, which is super dope because, uh, you know, who doesn't like new music? Um, so won't you please do me a favor and welcome Kamo to the show. What up, Kamo? Yo! What's up, everyone? Thank you so much for being our guest today, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's really great to have you on the show, dude. And um, I've been, yeah, like I said, I've been checking out your music for like quite a few years now. Um, yeah. Again, shout out to Four Color Zach, because Zach was really the first person that I knew that was playing your music. And um, mm-hmm. I mean, he's a he's one of he's a pretty big he's a he's a pretty big deal, right, Zach? Yeah, he's the goat. He's the goat. <laughs> and then he was yeah. on the he was on the show, and we actually talked about you. Um, and uh, yeah, and I was like, just you know, kind of keeping an eye on what you're up to, and you've been like doing a, a bunch of cool shit. Uh, and I saw you recently did like a bunch of shows in the states. Is is that right? Yeah, I just did um, a show in San Francisco with my friend uh, Juno Tropes and Saturn. That was a super sick show. That was like my first kind of live show, which is really cool. Um, I did a show back home here in Vancouver at this festival called Fade in the Park. That was super dope. And that was kind of more of a DJ set live mixture. And that was really fun. Yeah. Yo, Fade in the Park's a trip, dude. That's a big That's a big show. Yeah, it was dope. Um, and then what was it like cool. this, going on the road from music? Was that the first time you'd been on the road or had you done that before? That was the first time I'd ever like kind of left my home to do music stuff. That was really cool. Like a week trip to SF, just hanging out with my friend and then did like the show. Super cool. I just got back from LA. I was there for a month just doing uh, studio sessions with a bunch of people. That was oh, really shit. sick. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like writing that was really sessions? Fun. I was doing produ- like production sessions. Oh, fire. Uh, yeah. Please with, with... tell us more. <laughs> um yeah it was really dope um i've done i got in the room with a lot of cool people i met so many new people like it's crazy being in a studio and working on music with people is so much different than what i was used to like just making music on discord with my friends like it's a crazy it's a different vibe when you're in a studio with a bunch of people um I, i'm doing a bunch with uh jaleel we did a couple of sessions with each other i was super sick he's like the nicest guy ever is and, that uh is he a beat the beat maker Jalil or how how would I know of Jalil just um for context? he's like a he's an artist he uh he's like kind of a rapper singer um he's like up and coming he's pretty dope he's dropped some cool songs but yeah I'm just I'm working on lots of music with him like producing for him and stuff that's awesome man yeah that, that was super dope yeah had you have you ever been to LA before and been in any studio sessions like that no that was really my first thing yeah my first time kind of being in the studio was was out there which is crazy it's crazy. the studios in la are crazy right like yeah they're pretty crazy i was like dude this beats home man i got like one monitor and like these shitty headphones but you guys got all these like thirty thousand dollar microphone sound isolation like crazy and i'm just like on my laptop it's so funny yo the synth game of those big studios is, is next level oh, too, right crazy yeah I've, I've never like messed with any modular stuff before and they just got like all the old synths they got the junos they got the they got the core they got all they got everything it's amazing it's just like yeah it's like a sandbox <laughs> hey without getting too into the you know nitty-gritty details about you yeah, know, yeah yeah two stuff but i am curious to know like do you use a lot of outboard stuff or are you primarily in the box i'm basically all in the box i have like midi controllers and stuff that i i use sometimes like akai stuff and some arterial like keyboards but no like actual um synths or anything fair enough but yeah. that's is that mm-hmm. something you want to get into at all or would you would you i i'm definitely really like interested in getting into that but i feel like if i start then i'm just gonna like get addicted to it and just end <laughs> up spending all my money on synths which is basically like all my friends who buy synths so um it's gonna happen eventually but because I'm, I'm kind of like wanting to experiment more with stuff that's not just a vst but yeah it's really cool actually just um if we can just kind of dwell on this for a moment it's like cool 
Um, like a, a, like a lot of people play in bands and then they get into like guitar pedals and stuff and then like they get into production and they start putting like synths through like analog guitar pedals and like making like really fucked up sounds and it's like yeah you realize like the the possibilities are really endless hey like with sound design yeah it's it's pretty sick it's super crazy um we also speaking of gear though um we got a few people commenting on the classic camo yellow headphones is this um <laughs> is this a, like a a thing like oh wow yeah my mark? yellow headphones um these are i've had these probably since i started making music like 10 years ago Wow. Uh, I, I don't think these are the exact ones. I've had like a pair before that broke and they sent me new ones, which is dope. But wow. these are my tried and true Soul Republic headphones that I've had forever and just never upgraded from them. I'm just so used to the sound profile of these headphones that making music on anything else is like a trip. But That's they're dead mouse. Yeah, they're dead mouse <laughs> limited edition headphones from like back in the day. They're so hard. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a huge uh, endorsement right there for... um for Soul Republic. And is that a Yerba Mate? We're well, speaking of uh, product. Yes, content. this is a Yerba Mate right here. Yo, you guys should sponsor me. Send me some free beverages. That'd be lit. That's how we, that's how we do it. Um, yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, so one of the things I obviously wanted to talk about was your music. And um, like, mm -hmm. just if you will indulge me, I hear lots of like really cool elements and, and different genres in your music. You got like bits of D&B, hyper pop, bedroom pop, dubstep, trap, emo. I don't want to like say all these words. I would love to hear how you describe your music. Mm. It's kind of tough. It depends on what I'm making, but I, I like to describe my music as kind of experimental pop because um, yeah, I'd say experimental pop, experimental rock, indie tronica. I don't know. People got crazy names on radio music for these, for my songs, but I'm like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't bound myself into one genre, but I'd say like my biggest uh, my biggest genre would be experimental pop music. That's what I'd say. Electronic music, even. Yeah, I'm with yeah. that, man. I love that because mm. yeah, like it's. I was thinking like how how would I describe? I can't describe it because it is it embodies mm. a lot of different things, but they're mm. also it's so interesting. Do you think that at you know um, this might just be a bit of a washed question, but do you think that is like a sum of the fact that we have access to a lot of music now, you know, versus like when I was an old young man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like Spotify and like digital, like the invention of the internet, like has made finding new music so much easier than it has in the past. Like going on Spotify and just like getting recommended random stuff through the algorithm or friends sending you links to songs like you can listen to any song like instantly just trying to find it. There's so many playlists too, like lots of editors at Spotify curating dope shit. Like if you go on SoundCloud, there's like hella people dropping new music and like random remixes every day. It's like so easy to get your music out there and so easy to get your music like heard by a lot of people. So I've definitely like, I listened to, I mean, probably it, I wasn't really alive that much when the internet like wasn't existing, which is crazy, but, um, <laughs> I've like if I was older and I like had to find all my music through like CDs or vinyl, it'd be like crazy because you have to like if you only like one song, it's like you got to listen. You got the whole album on a CD. Or you got to buy a single. It's like people only you just got to buy albums and albums and albums. But on Spotify, it's like you only like one song from this album, one song from this album, find new people like dropping singles. It's like you can listen to so much more music now. <laughs> definitely different Absolutely. kinds of music. Yeah, I was thinking though specifically about SoundCloud. Like that's how I found about found out, found your music, and I still actually find your music on there and um, and YouTube too. Um, and mm -hmm. I actually, if you if you type in follow in the chat, if anyone who's watching wants to follow and isn't following Camo already, if you type an exclamation point follow, it'll pull up his SoundCloud and his IG. Um, highly recommend that. No brainer. Thank you. <laughs> but but you know, like, is there a difference? Like, do you find there's like a real difference between those platforms? For example, like YouTube. Personally, like it's such a visual thing and it, it kind of is a harder thing to find. Um, I don't know, discover it. Well, that's not true. Discover music in a way, unless of course you get like down a city pop rabbit hole or something. But SoundCloud just yeah. giving you like shit like every day. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. do you feel that those platforms will kind of inform the music you make for them? Um, I think like 
the music I make is dictated basically, yeah, like all the inspirations I'm listening to, like currently in the moment. I'm, I, I listen to a lot of different kinds of music, so that's kind of why my music is like all over the place because I've just I get inspired by lots of different kinds of music. So I kind of just take inspiration bits and pieces from different genres and different artists, and that kind of yeah does dictate what I what I end up making, like, like whatever I'm listening to. But you're not like trying to make a song for like the Spotify algorithm, or are you? No, I'm not. I'm not trying to make music <laughs> just to just to feed the algorithm. Some people do that, and that's smart because it probably, especially with TikTok, it's like you're making a song to feed into the TikTok algorithm. Go for it, man! Like <laughs> that's dope. Sure. But, but primarily, your motivations are just to make music that you love and care about. Yeah, my my main motivation is like make music that I'm super stoked about. And like, if I really like the song, and I'm like, chances are other people are really gonna like the song too. Yeah. So the, that's that kind of leads me into this question though. Like, I feel like you have a very distinct style. I can't really put my finger on it. It's great that you, you've you helped define it. But um, how did you kind of like stumble across finding that style or that voice? You know, because you, obviously your voice is, is one of the big characteristics about your music and, and you use it so well. And you know, how did you kind of, get comfortable with that um i kind of like for the first couple of years i was making music i wasn't singing at all i was just doing production uh primarily i was like making shitty edm music and i i don't know it was kind of the music i was listening to was not very heavy on vocals so i wasn't really um thinking about like incorporating my voice in my own music besides like samples here and there like shouts or whatever but then I then my I met friends online through Minecraft, funnily enough, and that's like I used to play Minecraft online a lot, and they kind of introduced me to like an underground scene on SoundCloud where people were making dope like underground hip hop music, and they had they were all using like crazy auto tune vocals, like stuff I've never heard before. So I was it kind of gave me like this new passion, this new idea to like try and incorporate my vocals into my music because like pop songs they got a lot of vocals it's like if you want to do a pop song you got to have vocals in it and i was just making music by myself so i was like i'm just going to try doing vocals and i just kept working at it for like years and i kind of discovered like the sound which is like kind of my pitched up like warped vocal um style that i like doing it's yeah. super dope dude it's it's crazy dope and um you know, like I, I produce music a little bit myself and, mm -hmm. you know, like that's the hardest thing for me to ever commit to is like putting my my own voice on a track. Like it's just like, nah. I, <laughs> yeah, you know? it's 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 you. It's really like vulnerable, like having your vocals be on a track like they're like, uh, what's the guy's Sam Gelatry or whatever his how do you pronounce his last name? Yeah, I've been listening to his music for a while. He was like total SoundCloud legend, but his new stuff that he's been doing super vocal heavy. I like had no idea he had this sick like voice and he's doing his new album's crazy like it's so cool these people like hide their voice because they're too afraid to put it onto a track because it's really like you're being vulnerable putting your voice onto a track because it's one thing just to like hide behind your your daw and make songs like that but putting your voice onto a track it's like you can do a lot more with that and with your like emotion and delivery that's su yeah. super dope you brought that up actually because i i just listened to that album um when it dropped the other day sam i think it, i call it i say sam goliatry i don't know if that's right either but... that might that might be right yeah <laughs> but yeah like i knew him from like doing crazy remixes like selection and and stuff like that and then um uh, then yeah he this album he put out is fantastic you're right and it's still kind of interesting his progression as an artist because he does kind of like it's it's definitely a departure from some of that stuff but mm -hmm. it's like this it still works like and I, I imagine that must have been a really i mean I have to ask him i guess but I imagine that was probably quite a challenge for him to kind of make that shift right yeah i think definitely making the shift from just filling up the entire sound spectrum with all your production and putting all the emotion to that and like learning to leave room for your vocals and have your vocals do a lot of the talking in the track is something that like there's a learning curve to it for sure and that's another thing that you do quite well, actually, because you, you make, like, I find that some of your tracks are very maximalist. There's a lot going on. And then other mm -hmm. tracks you make, there's a lot less going on. And, you know, maybe you're, you're giving more space for your vocal. Do you strike mm -hmm. that balance or, or is it just how, however it feels for you? Um, I think 
there's like whatever the emotion or the sound I want to um, deliver on the song. It's like my vocals are main and like in the in the front of the mix in songs where I think the vocals can like speak for itself. But then the songs where my vocals are super kind of warped. It's because I'm like letting the the production do the sound and kind of the vocals is like this added texture, almost just using vocals as an instrument. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm experimenting with like different ways of using my vocals instead of just like having my vocal be the front in all my vocal songs, but using kind of my voice in a different way than just regular pop music, just kind That's of using it, like incorporating it basically into like the production as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who would you say uh, is an artist that kind of like helps d does that, that you think does, does that really well? Um, I think like blade is a really big inspiration he his production does a lot of the talking and his vocals are like sometimes you can't even make out what he's saying but it's like you don't even need to because it's just a part of the the melodies and it, everything kind of just kind of works together with the beat same with like this is kind of a weird example but yeet i think he has like he you can't even understand what he's saying half the time <laughs> in his songs but it's like still goes hard because it's just an instrument really um i think sophie and arca too are are two great examples of like people who were experimenting with using vocals in like a creative way as well it's like those are some big inspirations to me vocally yeah that's really that's really awesome man i mean i, I do feel like sometimes producers approach vocals completely different to like traditional singers and mm -hmm. that is for me, I guess, as a, similarly as a producer, that's really exciting to me because it's, yeah, it's really warping the sound. And, and you do that in a really lovely way with, like, I think you talked about it in your Lyrical Lemonade interview uh, where you kind of, like, do a lot of panning and, and warping of the vocals mm -hmm. with autotune. It was super dope. And I, and that, that Lyrical uh, Lemonade interview is super dope, by the way. Um, if you haven't read it, I actually put it in, the, in our Discord, the Serato Discord, uh, if you wanted to check it out. Um, I mean, we're going to probably touch on some of the subjects that you talked about in mm -hmm. that. But um, that's pretty. That's a pretty good look. Hey, getting featured with Lyrical Lemonade. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, Billy. Billy is the goat. Um, yeah, they did a really good interview with me. That was super dope. That's awesome. And in that interview, you talked a little bit about um, uh, the No Heart Collective. And uh, forgive mm -hmm. me, I, I'm not super up to speed on it. I don't know if people in the chat are. Forgive me if I am. But I'd love to hear about like what that collective is and and kind of how you linked up with them yeah those are my friends um i've known them those are like the first people i kind of met through minecraft and like my homies that put me onto the whole scene we kind of started a collective a couple years ago um i'm not super like in that collective anymore i um i'm still friends with a lot of people that collective kind of went away after a while because we kind of all grew into our own separate sounds and the music we were making kind of just wasn't fitting together anymore which is totally dope and we all like kind of grew as artists and yeah, funnily, I'm actually wearing my old No Heart shirt, which is oh, crazy today that you're talking about it, because the merch is sick, man. Like our our designer showed it, he did an amazing job on the the pieces we dropped. But yeah, that was like a really good time. It was like that's kind of where I found my my voice was through that collective. So I definitely um, I definitely owe a lot to to my friends and my my fellow collective members from that. Yeah. Now, now, a little earlier, you, t you touched on this, but you guys, uh, I think you had a, a Discord you talked about and you did a lot of collaboration in that space. And mm -hmm. now that now you're going to LA and doing these in-studio, like these big, big, bigger projects. But mm -hmm. uh, how important was that early on, like that Discord, that sharing of, of production knowledge and sharing of ideas? How was how was that for you? Um, that was everything to me, honestly. Like I, since I was so young and like I still am young and like it's, I was just like confined in my room and I was like not able to break into whatever Vancouver scene there was because I didn't know anyone and my only like friends musically were on Discord and that's where I learned everything and I found new music and we would collaborate with each other and share samples and share lots of stuff like that was really important. Um, I feel like everyone that was in that Discord, we just like, we all found our sounds together and we all like just had such great times just like collaborating with each other it's 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 really dope that you can just like meet people from around the world that have like common interests just like work on music with them yeah it's super sick that's that's really important to me that's awesome man yeah we we um 
this isn't well this is a plug i'll be honest with you but we uh, we have a similar thing we do every week called um serato's kitchen and it's really like a actually burnt cd's just entered the chat and and yeah it's basically a very similar thing a bit more public and obviously a serato thing so we we broadcast it on twitch but we work with tracklib you know people take a sample and everyone flips that same sample and it's really oh, cool. just incredible the different beats you get and even as somebody who sometimes participates in it like how you evolve through that process and i heard you guys mm -hmm. did a lot of like sample flip challenges in, in your discord is that is that right yeah we did in the uh in the balls discord it's called balls <laughs> it's 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 a stupid name we just had it as a temporary thing and no one ever changed it so it's kind of just became iconic but we've we've done lots of the what we call them beat battles and we would basically we had different ones we would do but we would do like usually once a week or maybe multiple times a week, like in the heat of it, we would, we had a lot of people and it kind of grew and grew and we would do some of them. We would do like, okay, here's a sample. We'd all like throw out ideas for samples and whatever one we liked the best. We'll be like, okay, you have an hour, make a, make a beat with the sample, do whatever with the sample and then come back and then we'll all listen to it and just kind of go from there. There wasn't usually like a winner or anything. We just kind of just a challenge. And then okay. we also did one, which was really cool. Um, where we would do kind of a wheel of everyone who is in the chat with their names. And then you would get split off into pairs of two and you would like collaborate with this person for an hour and then just like post whatever you share, whatever you made in that hour, kind of like a studio session almost. Um, and we also did one where it was two people and then also a random wheel of genres. And then you would get assigned a random genre and you got to make a random genre with this random person all in an hour and then you share what you make. And sometimes you had some crazy, like we put stupid genres on the wheel. Sometimes we had like <laughs> podcast is one of the genres one hey. time. And we had <laughs> just like make a whole podcast. Uh, we, we had some crazy, uh, crazy stuff. Yeah. But I, I met a lot of people. Like I worked with a lot of people. I never thought I would have worked with through that as well, which is dope. Damn dude. An hour though. Like that's got it. That's cutting it tight, dude. Like, yeah sometimes we'll do like we used to do you have an hour and then if everyone's like really likes what they're working on and they think they need a couple more minutes we'll do like okay vote if you guys want a 10 minute extension <laughs> to finish this up and then we can do it yeah some people would cheat and they'd keep working on their shit while we were sharing it because i know there's some cheaters out there like i knew you guys were cheating hey man sometimes but it's you like hands mentioned. off you have an hour it's like hands off no mixing just like yeah. that's it man export whatever you got so but that's super dope. Like, I feel like that that kind of thing really helps you excel and develop like mm -hmm. kind of techniques to like become a better producer. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. I think I learned like especially one where you're making a different genre. It's like I I was making some music that was like completely far from. I made like a country song once. It was crazy. <laughs> it was like we would do like genre mashups too, where you have like two genres to work together. We did like country spoken word, like some crazy shit. Uh, when, I was when... just like. Sorry, what'd you say? I was gonna say, when's the Camo Country album dropping? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That'd be kind of dope. I'll do it with Taylor Swift. If she wants to do an album with Country album, I'll do it. <laughs> there you go. My friend, oh, my friend Blixty in the chat just yeah reminded me of that one. We did a music video one once where you have to make a song and a music video to the song and edit it and everything. And I think we gave like six hours to do that one. You had like a whole day almost to make a song and a music video, and then we played them for each other. That was dope. Well, shoot, that, that ties in well. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask you about your music videos because, yo, yo, oh, the music yeah. videos are crazy, dude. I got to be honest with you. Like, I really love your music videos. Like, I don't know how you do them. I, I, I want to know. I want to know, like, all about it um, because it's cra It's mm -hmm. like super well done, dude. Like, it's, I, I feel like Thank sometimes you. video is like, music is cool, right? <laughs> but doing mm -hmm. the extra vi video part is like really hard. Would you, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I think the visual is like a really important piece to the music. It's like having a visual, whether it just be like the cover art or like a Spotify canvas or anything, is important to like kind of understand the full depth of the song. And music videos for me, like I kind of had a little bit of editing knowledge before I was really doing music videos because I would make kind of like gaming videos or whatever. So I knew how to use editing and I, I use Final Cut Pro to edit all my stuff. Ah. And um, yeah, my music videos, it was just like, I still to this day it's like bare bones i literally have my little brothers record the music videos for me like do all the shooting 
one of my little brothers, he's like 11 now. He shot a couple of my videos and he was like nine or 10, just like hold the camera, shoot the video. And then I would take all the footage and kind of edit it together into whatever I could come up with. But yeah, for each song, I kind of want to match the energy with the video and like doing it all myself, like directing it and then editing it and doing all of it. It's just like the most pure way I can get my idea across. And that's just how I love doing it. I love making videos. I love creating the visual to it. Yeah. It's so good that you have full control over that. Also, mm -hmm. I want to give a big shout out to um, Camo's little brother on the DOP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's... Shout out to my little brothers for sure. Yeah. And it's cool. You, you thank them in the, in, the, uh, in the YouTube descriptions too. Like you're I do. Yeah. Giving credit where it's due. It's really lovely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, like having control of that narrative, like that's that's so much better right like i can't imagine what yeah. it would be like to like sign to a record label and then be like oh we're gonna do this video we want you to, you know we're a chain and we'll, you know like yeah yeah having like full creative control over my music and my video just like what i want it to be it's like it's really it's really amazing what like i can just kind of do whatever i'm feeling so my videos are just like they got stupid shit in them because it's just like i either ran out of footage or i'm like just I want to like, this is like the funny part of the video. I want to put some stupid memes in or some shit like, <laughs> and some of them it's like crazy on the effects and it's, it's hard because Final Cut is not the best editing program for detailed effects. Like I, but I'm so used to it. Same with like Logic, what I used to make music. It's like, I have put so much time into the software and I know how to use it like I know all the ins and outs of it. So it's like, I don't even know why I'd, I, why I'd switch. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, it sounds like you've got the Apple sponsorship on the way. We've got Logic, Final Cut Pro, both. Yeah. Apple I got the Pro. full Apple suite. <laughs> Very heavy in the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, Crazy. I feel like, well, first of all, K, KV Man, hopefully I'm saying that right, says uh, Camo needs a fat Cuban link, I'm assuming, for his next video. Uh, he's talking about the chain. Um I yeah. think he's talking about the chain list because he's talking about a cigar. Um, yeah. But let's uh, let's run one of your videos. Um, let's play gloves uh, yeah. on, on YouTube. Let's go.
Yo, big tune. Yo, thank you. Thank you. Fire video too, though. Video. Thank Bro. you. Thank you. Yes. We got a couple yeah. of people. Burnt CDs. This sounds amazing. Completely correct. Um, <laughs> Quanic. Quanic. I hope I'm saying that right. This scene is a reference to all the pirated software camo users. So, <laughs> incoming Apple sponsorship. <laughs> Probably not happening. <laughs> Gloves trivia. This there is a spelling error in this music video. From yeah, there's a spelling error. Yeah. What's the, I spelled evaluation wrong. It says evolution. Oh shit. And I didn't I didn't I didn't see that in the uh in the final watch through before I uploaded it, but yeah. But yo, that's keeping it real, you know, it's you know <laughs> Yeah. DIY, this is a one this is a like two guy operation here, like this is DIY at its finest. No spell check spelling for errors, bro. yeah. <laughs> No spell check, no. He was like, all good, man. <laughs> hey, we got a question yeah, from Trox. Yeah, he can't even spell. He probably couldn't even spell his own name back then. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we, got a, we got a question from Trops 777 and it's a good question, and I'd like to know it too. Does Kamo okay. eat mac and cheese? Oh, of course. I love mac and cheese. Kraft mac and cheese, Kraft dinner, delicious. The Annie's mac and cheese is good too. Good homemade mac and cheese, any kind of mac and cheese. Really, I'm a big connoisseur of mac and cheese. Absolutely. If if you invest in the cheese, the mac and cheese gets better. That's that's the ratio. Um. That's true. That's true. <laughs> now this was that was shot in Vancouver. I'd love to know where. Just this is probably very very limited to Vancouver people in the chat. But where in Vancouver was that shot? This is actually shot in Surrey, which is yes, Surrey, my hometown. Technically, technically it's own city right technically it's own city which yeah so if i tell people i'm from vancouver it's a lie because i don't want them knowing i'm from surrey but um I, there's shots like patella bridge yeah um one of the shots there is like i'm on the sky train and i'm shooting out the window for some b-roll stuff so i think you can see the patella bridge yeah there's some there's some vancouver locations there but mostly like surrey locations shout out surrey like, a lot of random. good people from Surrey. A lot of good people. That's true. There's a lot of good people from Surrey. Uh, yeah, it's basically like all the locations. I was just walking around with my brother at night, like looking for stuff that looks cool, just like on our bikes. And we're like going around trying to find a location. And I was like, this looks dope. Let's shoot here and whatever. It's super spontaneous. I wasn't kind of looking for locations or anything. It's it's a nice, there's a lot of very scenic things in Surrey and you're pretty close to the border there. So, I'm, I mean, White Rock also is pretty much Surrey, right? Like, can we, can you, just, can you just claim White Rock as Surrey? I think White Rock is technically Surrey. It's like South Surrey, yeah. Yeah, okay. We're in agree yeah. agreement there. Um, and then yeah. <laughs> we got NJ2AK uh, in the chat. He said, shout out, I think Stomp Down Killers. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> dude. That's some OG Surrey shit right there. Yeah, it's, those, those guys are kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> a, little, a little bit. Um, but speaking of Canada stuff, I, I, I do really want to, like, I'm I'm in Canada. I'm broadcasting to you from Mount Pleasant right now. Shout out Nardwar. Oh, dope. Shout out, um, you know, Canadian. Shout out content. Nardwar for you. I, I love Mount Pleasant. If I was going to, like, move out of Surrey, I want to move to Mount, Mount Pleasant. It's so, so dope over there. Please come visit. We yeah. got good food. I'll buy you coffee, lunch, whatever. I owe you one. Um, <laughs> but, um, so I, I want to know, like, um, what does being from Vancouver or Surrey provide you with, like, musically? Is it, does it inspire you? Um, yeah, I think especially from, like, being here in Surrey, it's like I never really had a music scene here. I never found, like, a scene because I was just, like, going to school in Surrey. And it's, like, the school I was going to, it's, like, no one was really, no one else was really doing music. It was just, like kind of a very people just focusing on school and like getting into a university but I was like totally the opposite like just trying to make songs and my teacher sometimes didn't appreciate it because I'd be like making a beat in class um <laughs> but it's like that ins I think it kind of inspired me to like not want to do I think inspiration comes from like challenging circumstances sometimes 
because I didn't really have anyone in my life that was like telling me at school like I wasn't going to a music school I wasn't going to like music classes it was like just whatever random high school classes and I didn't have that many in-person friends who were telling me who I could like go collaborate with in person it was just like all online but I think like going to shows and music festivals especially like Fade in the Park which is like I, I, I started going when I was super young with my dad he took me like years and years ago and that was like a big inspiration like seeing all these artists that I've listened to online forever seeing them live it's like live music is such a uh a different art to like just listening to music in headphones it's like you can have a song that sounds really not that good on headphones but like live the song is like amazing especially DJs like they know how to use like whatever crazy live edits they have it's like going to shows especially was a super big inspiration to me because I would even at festivals I would like see random artists I'd never heard of before and be like yo this shit's really sick like I'm definitely going to check this artist artist out like going to contact and faded those are like the two festivals I went to those are those are those are some big inspirations yeah that's super dope man I, I love hearing that because um I know Kanye and I, I know Kanye West is probably not the greatest artist to talk about right now but in this context um yeah he he, he talked about um I, I, re- I remember hearing the story about how when he released graduation um, it was after he went on tour with U2. Again, this might not be like the greatest reference, but basically he went from playing like clubs and stuff to stadium shows. And I really love yeah. that you talked about that because even festival shows, you know, it's almost about like how do, how do you create music for that environment, right? Do you, like, so it's mm-hmm. not gonna it's gonna sound clear on a big system. It's gonna impact. Yeah. There's gonna be a, a drop, or is gonna be a way that it affects people in that environment when they're tripping mm. out or whatever, you know, how yeah. do you speak to that environment really well, you know? Yeah. Like that's, that's a, that's definitely something you got to think about when you're, when you're a musician, like, how is this going to translate live? Like, what's my show going to be like, right. what's like the flow going to be when I played faded, it was like, I knew I wanted to do live vocals, but also DJ. So it was basically a set of all original music and edits and remixes that my friends have done too. And I was just DJing and like running back and forth from the booth and singing with my live auto tune. Like, yeah, it's I I had special versions for a bunch of my songs that I was like, this is going to be crazier live. That's dope. Yeah. So. um, So um, if you're if you're not familiar with Kamo DJ sets in the chat, go check them out, because the DJ sets, the ones that you post on YouTube are super dope. So especially with all the energy you really you give. Yeah, it's a full performance. You know, it's no. Mm -hmm. Just it's no shoegazy shit. It's like the real deal. You're going hard, you know. So yeah, that was for like that was before I even ever had the chance to play like actually live. I was like, there's these online festivals my friends are doing, and I was like, this is my Coachella right here. Like I'm putting my all into this online set, so I just got to make it good. Yeah. Well, is that something you want to do more of? Like maybe create more of a like a live show with like I don't know musicians or something yeah i would love to like i i would it would be super dope to do um a live like more live shows in the future where i actually have like live instruments happening i'm trying to learn how to play guitar because some songs that i'm working on i'm trying to incorporate guitar into because it's like guitar vsts like they're pre- they're getting pretty good but it's something about like actually playing the guitar that's hard to replicate on a computer like strumming and everything so i've been i've been trying to learn how to play guitar because i really want to eventually have songs with the guitar and like play guitar on stage while singing because i just think the silhouette of like someone standing with the mic and like playing guitar is just like super powerful and something that's like really inspiring so i just want to i want to be able to do that also live drums too like my buddy eric uh eric doa he he went on tour and i i, I came out with juno who was opening to do a couple songs at fortune here in vancouver that was super dope um but he's got like full live band guitar bass and drums which is crazy because he kind of translated it into that live realm when all of his shit was like programmed drums and everything and just like making it work with a full band is super cool i'd love to do a full band in the future for sure for my live shows yeah man you know um playboy cardi he got he got that live guitar going on Uh, that's sick that's a really cool thing that he's got like the special live guitar intros for all this yeah he's got a really good live show and that guy who plays yeah. guitar from uh, OG Volta, shout out Mark OG Volta. He he produces like he did a bunch of shit for Donda on the Donda record and 
okay. he's, he's super he's really dope man um that's dope. Out, i didn't know that that's yeah. cool he's in la yeah. man you'll probably end up doing a session with that guy <laughs> yeah that'd be dope yeah um, i'm really trying to find cool people to do sessions with that'd be super sick yeah uh also um uh are you familiar with you must be familiar with shlomo um yeah yeah for he, sure uh, that, re- that last record he did he used a lot of guitar on that it was really dope um if you haven't heard that in the chat anybody um check that out shlomo i can't remember what it's called but the shlomo record it's um shit what's that we did it the collective those guys super dope. oh yeah um yeah. and then just to clarify uh no i wasn't dissing shoegaze i love shoegaze music chronic um it was just more of a statement about how djs don't look up a lot i'm guilty of that myself so yeah yeah um, but we do have some questions in the chat. I'm going to just quickly jump in here. Uh, we're okay. We got, uh, okay. No, we can, we can probably move on from here. Oh no. Any music with Oliver tree soon. I saw that picture with you and him. I'm not too familiar with who that is. Do you know who that is? Me and him. I, do I have a picture with Oliver tree? I don't, I don't even know if I have a picture with Oliver tree. I met, I think he was at like a party I was at in LA, but I, I didn't even like meet him. I didn't talk to him. If there's a picture of me and Oliver Tree that I don't remember taking or something, please someone send that to me. But um, yeah, no, he's he's cool. I like his stuff. Like it'd be dope to do music with him in the future. That's uh, that's a very LA thing to happen though to get a photo with somebody yeah. you don't realize and forget about it. Um, <laughs> shout out to the homies in LA though. I'll be back in LA next week. Looking forward to being back down there. But let's keep it on the nice. subject of Vancouver. Um, yeah. Before we go too far. Um, are you getting any funding from Creative BC or CanCon? Because, like, you really should. <laughs> I'm not. Um, yeah, I don't really know too much about that. I probably should be looking into that, though. That'd be kind of dope. Yeah, that's definitely... One I've of heard the- there's a lot of a lot of really cool, like, offers that they are willing to just, like, help you, guys, help you out with lots of shit, whatever you're doing, yeah. Not going to lie, it's a lot of paperwork, but they will help you pay for your music video, so... They can get you off the pirated Final Cut Pro and maybe official version. Yes. What? What are you talking about? No pirating <laughs> software here. Everything's legally downloaded and paid for. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. Hey, this is really great, man. Thank you. I want to say thanks again. And thanks to everyone who's tuned in in the chat right now. Um, yeah, thank you so much. It's great to have you here. Yes, thank you. And this, pod, this, this podcast is live. We're doing it right now in real time. And it will be mm-hmm. available later for people who want to watch it on YouTube and stuff like that. So, yeah, you nope. can. If you missed the first bit or whatever, you can check it back. Um, and you mentioned Eric DOA, and you have a song with him. Um, yeah. Love that tune. Um, what's your, Thank how you. did you, how did you get linked up with him? Uh, Discord, literally through Discord. I met so many people through Discord. That's where I met all my friends. I was actually staying at his house in LA for like a month when I was there. I just got back a couple days ago. That was super, super awesome. And like, meet him again because i the first time i met him was in vancouver when he came to fortune but um super like amazing guy he's super nice he's like one of my really good friends um yeah i just kind of had this this song this open i just like didn't know what to do for this verse and i was like you know what i think eric would go crazy on this so i just sent it to him he literally sent me his vocals i was like send me some footage for you in the music video i was expecting like him like rapping along or something he literally just sends me footage of him like walking the street for like 20 seconds and i was like I guess i'm working with this <laughs> it's a dope yeah. video though do you mind if i if i if we play that song actually yeah you can play it too yeah okay um, that's also shout out my shout out my brother for filming that one let me pull this up i think i got some ads to get through on this one unfortunately oh yeah oh yeah they're trying sorry to about this. that <laughs> oh, that's my bad uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna sell those plugins we'll just politely wait for them to finish and then we'll share the screen all right here we go uh one second
I never had done Screaming in my ear, but I'm not giving reaction What happened? Yeah. 65 days passed, but it's still the same shit yeah, I lost more people on the sunsets that I made yeah. in the lane switch, I remain inactive We got all the servers, never been going with subtraction I'm close to it a bad bitch, she loving my accent Can't even make songs, cause I'm stuck up on the past tense hey, Bro got signed, now he don't know where his cash went Throwing bullets in a spiral, you thought it was mad and Spend my money when I want it, when I like it Yes. Thank you. We came back while you're a uh, munching. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> All good. <laughs> um, Tropes, do you love Sans, Sans Serif more than Papyrus? That's sad. Papyrus is definitely <laughs> the goat font. Um, Papyrus is the world best font. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, love, uh, I love Papyrus. It's, it's like a love-hate relationship, right? Like, yeah. yeah, it is a love-hate relationship. I'd say my actual favorite font is like Helvetica, but like Helvetica with two L's. It's the one that's like, it's Helvetica, that's one made, but it's got like random spacing in all the characters. So that's like just <laughs> off of every word. Yeah, that one's super funny. Death metal Helvetica. Yeah, death metal right there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wanna, I'm actually curious if Four Color Zach's here. I'm, I don't know if he is, but. I'm curious to know what his favorite font is also. He seems to be a very design-friendly um, yes. kind of guy. Now, um, you, you also covered Chuck, Chuck Sutton's track, Rosetta. So that's kind of a hard one to say all these words together. Yeah. Chuck is a really talented producer too. And um, you know, I want to shout out, big shout out to Chuck. I met him at South by Southwest, maybe 2016. He's like a super oh, creative and cool dude. Um, definitely yeah, he's the best. Yeah. So how did you... How did you link up, or how did that kind of come about? That doing that cover for for Chuck. Um, I was just like a fan of him really for for a while, and I and I heard that song. I was like, definitely want to do something with this because I really like the melody a lot. I was like, I want to do a take on this track. Um, and I and then I talked to him about it. But yeah, kind of after I made that cover, he. He, I think he found my music just from that cover, really, and that's how we kind of became friends and like wanted to work on shit together. We still haven't really done that much music together, but I've, I've been friends with him for a while. Yeah, he's known me for a couple of years now. He's really amazing producer, super talented, great dancer too. Like he's fire. But I didn't even know he lived in LA, and he texted me like a couple of days ago, like, "Yo, like, how you doing?" You like, and I was like, "Oh, dude, I was in LA for a month. I had no idea you lived there." Like crazy because i think he just moved there from like new jersey or something but yeah definitely when i go to la i'm gonna link up with him for sure make some cool music with him that'd be super sick really inspiring yeah we need to get um the business development grant from cancon for the next trip to la <laughs> and yeah we also true. need the the video fact grant so kmo's videos get more money and you can buy the cuba I, link yeah i need to look into that i can just I want. I would just get yeah. Use the video grant. Get my brother like a slightly better iPhone to shoot on, and then uh, get like a Cuban link. We'll throw in the Cuban cigar too. Like we'll just go all out for the next video. Yeah, yeah, I mean that might be hard on the the budget line. Oh, justifying the the Cuban link expense might blow the budget, but you know why might. not? Give it a try. See what happens. Yeah, that's all I really need. <laughs> but um. Now you're gonna to have to excuse this next question because I'm an old washed skater, and um, I was really bugged out that your dad is like a pro skater, uh, Moses at Conan. I hope I'm yeah. saying the name right. I apologize. Yeah, that's how you say it. Yeah. But for those who don't know in the chat, um, maybe because you're a lot younger than me, Moses was a member of the Red Dragon skate crew and was one of the OG skaters from Vancouver with Mick Rick Mick Mick Rick 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 Rick
That's so dope, dude. I just got. I, I think yeah. that's so crazy. Uh, <laughs> what was that like? Mm-hmm. As as your dad being like this like OG pro skater. It's super sick. I love skateboarding. Like uh, skateboarding is a big part of my life when I'm not music- making music. Or like, yeah, I'm basically just skateboarding whenever I'm not making songs because I love skateboarding. Shout out to my dad for like forcing me to skateboard when I was like six. On a, he like got me my first skateboard. Like, yeah, it's it's awesome. I like wear I wear a lot of the RDS shit still. Like, uh, he gets me a lot of free shit. Like, I'm always repping that hardcore. Like wherever I go, skateboards too. Like, I'm always getting stuff from him. Yeah, it's really dope that he uh that he's so good at skateboarding because <laughs> yes it's like and it's good that i'm like it's kind of embarrassing because i'm really not that good at skateboarding which is embarrassing when my dad's literally like vancouver goat but um when people find that out it's like embarrassing for me but at least i have music so i'm like i put effort into something guys like come <laughs> on but um if i spent all the time making music i did skateboarding i'd probably be way better than i am now but yeah, it's it's super sick. Like getting to meet a bunch of like I went to California with him like when I was super young to he was doing like a skate trip or like a trade show or something. Uh, that was super cool. But yeah, I mean I think he's probably grateful in some ways because like when you get older and you've been a skateboarder, your bones, man, like it's just not yeah. good for the old health. Thank good, thank goodness he lives in Canada where we have like free healthcare and stuff because that shit's <laughs> not cheap. Um, no, yeah, it's crazy. And um, and uh. I was going to say, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, music is ob- obviously a lot easier on the bones. Shout out to Skull Skates. You had the Skull Skate hoodie and a, and a couple oh, of yeah. things that was super dope. Yeah, for sure. Love Skull Skates. I, I wear that a lot. But does dad, does your dad like rock with your with your music? Does he, he's, I must be supportive, right? He's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's so supportive. Like he totally understands what I'm doing because he didn't like go the traditional route or anything. Like he was like dropped out of school and he was like 16 going on a skateboard tour. Like I'm sure his parents were not super stoked about that but like he kind of understands where i was coming from like wanting to pursue this dream of mine to do music and he's always been like super supportive like i think he was probably like my top listener on soundcloud maybe for like the majority of my my career like i think he still might be up there like most listens to my song is like he's up there for sure but yeah big supporter of my music yeah he's the goat yeah, well, it's like a family affair. Big up Mo's, uh, Kamo's dad. That's hella dope, man. Um, uh, yeah, and mm-hmm. I guess that's cool too. Like he's probably a good role model in that way, where he can't really like say, "Oh, don't do, don't follow your dreams. Don't, don't do what I did. It was terrible." Because he was like, really good yeah. at it, you know? Yeah, and he's like doing good now too. Like with with all of his distribution and with the brand and everything. Like being a pro skater, figuring out how like. When you get older, you can't just be a pro skater anymore. You got to figure out how to turn into a business. He did a really good job doing that. Yeah, it's kind of like a definitely a, a inspiration to me for sure. Um, now, a lot of people like I think a lot of people will probably be like getting into your music. And speaking of role modeling, you know, do you ever consider that like, oh yeah, there's fans of mine that are gonna want to like try and sound like Camo now? Um, mm. Like, if you were to like kind of give advice or like. I don't know, give them a cheat code or something that you want to share with people about like that kind of stuff or just getting into music or making music. Like what would you, Mm -hmm. what would you tell them? I would tell them like literally just open up whatever DAW you're using or whatever you want to make and just try and learn it all. Just try and figure out what everything does. Click around and just like experiment with everything. I didn't even think about looking up YouTube tutorials until like way too long. I just like was kind of sitting in front of logic just like clicking around and trying to figure out how to use it but i think youtube tutorials are dope too you can learn so much cool shit on youtube like you don't have to pay for anything there's free tutorials basically how to do anything in any daw like and you can find like lots of free daws too um online stuff like apps on your phone like steve lacy uses fucking whatever he uses garage band to make like some hit songs like crazy just right on your phone like you can do anything so don't don't like um don't try and think that you need to buy expensive equipment or buy crazy plugins because you can basically do everything like majority of stuff for free and just like find your own sound by making whatever music you want to make. Yeah. That's absolutely right. And it it seems appropriate not to kind of piggyback off that too hard, but uh, (laughs) we got a, we got a free DAW. Serato makes a free DAW. So go get that. Yeah. If you want to start somewhere. 
Um, True. But yeah, if, if you, you know, if logic is not free, so you know. <laughs> no, logic is not free. But there's plenty of free options out there. Like, go for it. You could probably find find uh, lots of cool shit online. So, yeah, absolutely. A lot of good tutorials. A lot of cool people to learn from. Just like make music, whatever whatever you'd want to listen to, like whatever music you like listening to, make a song that you would want to listen to. That's what I think. Like, would I want to listen to this song like on repeat? Like, do I make music that I would like want to listen to? I make music so that I have like cool music to listen to. That's yeah. really that's so important, man. I think mm -hmm. I think that's really. For some people, it's like it's it's weird because the uh, I well, one time I was at school and my friend was like, "Are you listening to your own song right now?" And it's like, "Dumb, listen to my own song, man. This shit is so sick. Like, <laughs> why would I not listen to this song? This is a dope song." It's like. I don't know. It's it's weird when people are like, "That's weird if you listen to your own music." It's like, no, it's not. I like this song a lot. Well, I think that's yeah. a good a, a thing though. Like, it's I think a lot of musicians, uh, and I, I'm kind of guilty of this too. Have a little bit of self doubt sometimes about their own creations, mm -hmm. and sharing it sometimes gives you sharing it, and then getting positive feedback reassures that you don't suck, right? Sometimes it will. Yeah, people exactly. will let, people will let you know you suck, but the more you do it and you don't <laughs> yeah. give up, people will start. Mm -hmm. Oh, that doesn't suck. Oh, that's better. You know, and I think. Yeah. That kind of stuff is really helpful too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like putting it out there, especially like on SoundCloud and stuff, people like commenting. I used to get like <laughs> mean comments on my old music because it would get picked up by someone like on a repost and like people would just see it and not know I'm like a 12 year old on like Logic trying to make a song. They'd be like, this sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. And I just kind of kept going and just like, yeah, putting it out and hearing feedback from people is like a really important thing or playing it with for your friends and it's like hearing if they like it or if they don't like it. Play a song for your mom. If you're my friend told me if, if your mom likes your song, then it's probably like a really good song. Yeah. Wow. It's hard, man. Mm -hmm. Moms are tough critics sometimes and sometimes they they may not have the best taste, so um That's true. <laughs> you yeah. gotta be careful. Some of my some of my like top performing songs I played for my mom. She was like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, but it's really true though, and I and I I mean if if you're if you're a DJ as well as a producer, right? You got to play your shit, like you got to play your tracks, because for a long yeah. time, I think uh, you know I I I'll just not to make it too personal, but I would not play my own remixes or my own edits and my tracks because mm -hmm. I felt like oh other people should do that and I should just play other people's stuff. But if you don't play your stuff, like who's gonna play it? Like how are people gonna get like stoked about it? Right? Yeah, you gotta exactly. Kind of sure. Believe in yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's super dope. Um, Quanic City played a Kamo song for my mom and she exploded. I'm sorry, man. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. That sucks. That was not probably what yeah. it was intended for. Um, I know. But um, hey, I have a question that we ask everybody who comes on the show and um, I'd love to get your answer. Uh, feel free to answer it as deep or as quick as you want, however is best. But um, what does the power of music mean to you? The power of music mean to me? I think the power of music is... Like, let me think about that for a second here. The power of music. What does that mean to me? Music is like everything to me in my life. It's like what I put, what I channel my emotions through. It's what I do in my free time. It's what I do when I should be doing schoolwork. Like, it's what I'm listening to constantly in the day. It's like music gets me through everything. It's like even the most mundane tasks, if you're listening to like good music, it can make it more it can make it awesome. It can make it exciting. You can listen to a new new album while you're doing your work or whatever. Like music can like and it can evoke such strong emotions. Like your body, like you can get like goosebumps on your body if you hear a good song. That's like crazy shit. It's like what my body has like a physical reaction to this song. It's like or you cry to like a really sad song. It's like music is so powerful. It's like way more powerful than words. Like if yeah, music is 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 powerful in that way to me where it's like everything in my life can be explained with music basically that's yeah. awesome that's so that's so dope mm -hmm. man thank you for that and then like if you're going to collaborate with somebody if, if you could collaborate with anybody and now that you're going to la this might become more and more of a more of a reality but who, who would be like your ultimate like i don't know it doesn't have to be a collab album it could just be like one song but like whatever you'd want to collaborate with who would that be I want to collab with Skrillex. That'd be super sick. He's like, ever since I was a little like big inspiration, I just like 
He's, his sound design is crazy. I would love to do that. I really want to work with 10 Tricks Point Never. Like oh, wow. really cool, really cool sounds and shit. Like he was making music so far ahead of everyone else. Um, yeah. And I, I really wanted to collab with Sophie too. Sophie was one of my, my biggest inspirations. Rest in peace to her. Like she's really amazing. Was making like boundary breaking music like light years before, um, before it's time. But yeah, those those ones and definitely Blade and Echo 2K as well. Those are two. The the Swedish legends, they're like my favorite. So collabing with them would be really sick. But basically, even if I don't get a collab with them, just like hanging out with them or just like talking to them and like understanding their inspiration and their philosophy behind music would just be super inspiring. Yeah. yeah you know what's really cool is that you talked about specifically Skrillex and his sound design and his mixing. And that's something mm-hmm. I really hear a lot in your music. Like it's really, it's very well, it's like you can tell you've, you've spent time really perfecting that or, or, or getting to a point where you're really happy with it. And um, last week we mm-hmm. had a guy called Zach Witness on who, who was also a very, very talented uh, sound design and mix, mixing guy. Um, he, uh, he, we had a conversation about this and I thought it might be good to revisit it just because he, he was saying like, you know, like instruments, uh, the voice, these are characteristics of a song, but mixing is almost like such a huge component now. It's almost the kind of thing that defines it and moves music genres and the sound of music forward. Um, what's your take yeah. on, on something like that? Mixing, yeah. I think mixing is really important because it's like, you might have a really good idea, but if like a gen- like a random person hears it, if it's not mixed well, they're going to be like, this is like not what I'm used to. Cause if they're used to more mainstream music, it's all super polished and perfected. Then like, if like a top 40 pop listener hears like a shoegaze song, it's like, what is going on? Like, this sounds like nothing that I've, that I understand. Mixing is like super powerful because mixing a song in different ways just com- completely change the song. Like I, I really think that spending like too much time fussing over mixing can sometimes like get rid of that sort of edge or that creativity like spend all your time really just making the idea and then like i i mix my songs as i go i don't really do any mixing um afterwards i'm just like mixing as i'm making it but um yeah mixing is like lots of genres are totally based on how they're mixed like shoegaze music is mixed like super like washed out crazy there's like um there's a like Cartier God. He does like some crazy mixing where his songs are just like compressed to shit. And it's just like no dynamic range, just like heavy compression. And it's like, technically that's terrible. That's not how music is meant to sound, but like create, like creatively, creatively wise, creativity wise, I guess. Um, that's like, it's crazy. It's like dip, super different. People will just like, however you mix a song is like, can really define the actual song. And like what, what people think of it, yeah, yeah. Hey, and that's a good point. Random fat kid eight one one. That's your username, right? Um, he says, uh, they say, sorry, people who make the, uh, make the song and then mix it are effing maniacs. And I kind of agree. Like it is, <laughs> it is kind of like another level, though, right? Like if you mix as yeah. you go, it's kind of like you're constantly carving it away. It's like a piece of wood, and you're mm. getting your picture out. Yeah. If you make the song and then you mix it, I, I wonder if that's hard. I I also think though that. Like some of my favorite albums and more like I guess traditional albums have a cohesive mix throughout the whole thing, and I wonder yeah. like you've done a lot of singles. You've done you put like I know mm. primarily your singles. Is is an album something that you want to make? And if you are going to make an album, would you mix it like a whole its own thing? You know, like a piece of it of art, yeah. one whole thing, or would you do it kind of individually? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been dropping a lot of singles because I'm really just trying to figure out like i'm still trying to find my sound and like what i want my project to be um i really love to do an album i'm just working on songs constantly but like an album where it's all cohesively mixed and all the songs are like are are kind of one like presented as one unit and this one kind of idea is like super sick and i think if i was going to do an album i'd probably go through and mix everything some some albums where they have like the gapless like transitions into next song super sick like i would love to do that sometimes it sounds kind of goofy if someone's listening to the single on spotify or whatever <laughs> yeah uh, when it like starts to transition into like another song and then it just like cuts 
but um doing an album like that would be super dope too like where it's all trans kind of like one fluid body of work almost yeah yeah, yeah i'd yeah. love to hear that right now it's just like doing singles it's super fun but actually like making a, a whole project with this unified idea is like something that's definitely in the future for me for sure that's awesome well can you can you like let us know what you got coming up or is there anything that like you you know that we can you can share with with us either songs or tours or or shows yeah i got i got a bunch of songs in the bank i'm gonna have some shit dropping soon hopefully um i'm doing a lot of production for other people too so like stay on the lookout i guess on my whatever you'll hear my beats or whatever through other people um because that's like another thing that's inspiring to me is like collaborating with people and just like producing for rappers or pop people doing songwriting like that's super sick but definitely like expect some more music in the in the future very near future um yeah i'm hoping to drop like a couple more singles this year maybe or um at least one more single this year before i kind of go into like maybe an ep or album rollout but uh yeah stay tuned i got stuff in the works yeah that's fantastic and you know speaking of collaborations um just if we can continue on that just for a second um would you ever entertain someone like pr doing the music production and and you just focusing on vocal or vice versa just producing a whole um, album for a vocalist i've done that before i've done some songs that are on soundcloud where it's um like just my vocal on someone else's beat and uh that was kind of like a strange idea to me at first because I was like, I'm making the song. It's like, I'm going to do all of it. But then everyone was like, well, that's not usually how it works. It's like other people will have a helping hand as well. But I think for my artist stuff, like I am basically like producer first almost in that way. Like I'm thinking like a producer where most of the time when I start a song, I just make a beat and then I'm writing on the beat afterwards. And I'm not usually like writing before the beat. So I think, if I was going to do an album, it would it would probably mainly just be like fully self-produced, fully my vocals and with like very limited uh, features on it for sure. Because I just like to make something that's like 100% true to me. And this is like my vision executed through my hands and through my through my um, my uh, my laptop, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I really respect yeah. that, though, man. That's that, that's that's yeah. Really but I'm 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 super down for working with other people like that's even if i don't end up releasing whatever i make with someone it's like we still grow as artists when you collaborate with each other and uh i've done some songs where it's literally just my beat and a future vocalist on it too um i like doing that too as well yeah yeah i don't know if i if i can talk about this but um when i spoke to four color zach we we talked about you know certain r b artists getting production or songwriting from Kmo. So I'll just leave it at that. But uh, whatever yeah. that could be would be super fire. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That, that R&B artist that I can't talk about would be super dope to have production from Kmo. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, lastly, this is kind of like a, a bit of a producer nerd chat. Um, but do you, st do you start your, when you start production, do you um, start drums first or, or do you do samples, melodies, first um it really depends on like whatever song i'm making it's different every single time but usually i'm i'm starting with the main melody or the main chords first and but some songs i've really started like i made a drum loop because i just wanted to experiment with a different groove and then kind of build around that but i usually like to let the melody almost if the melody can work and have like a little groove to it by itself then it's like the drums are just kind of an added layer there to me. Cause I think doing like everything before the drums and it already has a dope groove. It's like, you can think about, okay, do I even want the song to have drums? It's like most of the time I do, but it's like, if the song can live and have like a, its own groove and like something that you can bop your head along to without drums at all, like that's a super, that's something that can be challenging to a lot of people, but that's like super validating when, if you like have a song, and you listen to it with no drums it's like it still has a very defined groove it's like that's super dope yeah you know you know you know who i think does that really well actually is i mean i don't know i know it's not just him but like frank ocean and his vision mm -hmm. of what he does with his albums are really so interesting like kind of like 
yeah, there's just like it's almost like sometimes they're quite abstract, but the sound design and and Kanye to to a less to, as well, you know, they'll, they'll just really strip things back and it'll just be like vocals and like moody sounds, and it's like wow, dude, like there's so much space, you know, and yeah, very interesting, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, definitely, super super sick. Yeah, Frank Ocean does that a lot. Yeah, Kanye does that well too. And um. On that, actually, um, like I'd love to know, like, who is someone you're listening to currently, or that you've just discovered that you'd want to share with with us? Um, sorry, wait, can you say that again? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so who is someone that you're like just listening to now, or or you've just discovered that you know you'd want to put on or have us discover and listen oh, yeah. to as well? You guys need need to listen to this artist. They've been in the chat for a little bit, but Quanic they are fucking crazy like their shit they putting out right now is like not enough people are hearing this music it's amazing the album that they're working on is so sick they kind of make like this i don't even know what to call it like shoegaze inspired rock like whatever crazy they make really cool music i think people need to listen to jane remover more i think they're finally getting their name put on the map but jane remover is amazing um yeah there's there's so many cool people making music Braden, uh, BPIV, they're making cool music. Like, um, I think more people need to listen to Days God for real. This guy from New York, like Days God's crazy. Um, I'm trying to think of some other artists here that I can put on right now, but <laughs> mainly my friends. You guys got to listen to my friends. Like, they're making cool music. I'm inspired by my friends. Like, uh, <laughs> you thought I was an internet troll. No, yeah, yeah. I, I'm inspired by my friends, like, and and they're making really cool music that not not enough people are hearing, for sure. And if you haven't heard of Blade either, you should check out Blade because Blade's kind of cool. If I you just, hated it, first, that's normal, but you'll get used to it. Yeah, he yeah. does come up a lot and uh, and stuff with you for some, mm-hmm. for some reason. So I'm I'm glad to hear that it's 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 from a place of love. It's not a <laughs> it's not sarcasm. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. Well, Quanic, yeah, thank you for tuning in and thanks for being in the chat, Quanic. Um, I'm gonna have to check you out if you want. Um, actually, yeah, if you can, Quanic, if you're if you're able to, can you just DM, uh, DM me and I'll I'll share your your SoundCloud in the Serato Discord. Um, if that's cool, if you want that, I'll happily or whatever whatever your platform of choice is. Um, but um, Kmo, before you go, um, Actually, if actually, well, before you go, if we have people in the in the chat that do have specific questions for Kmo, now is the time to, to put those questions in here because we're taking up a lot of Kmo's valuable time. Um, but I do have a question for oh, you, good. Kmo. Don't worry. Um, yeah. Oh, just whisper me on tw- on Twitch, dude. Uh, Quanic, it, it's just the cut corners. I'm in the chat. Um, and yeah. um, I was gonna ask. Sorry, I was gonna ask you, Kmo. F- funk music, yes or no? Like P H O, yes, funk, yes, yeah. I think it's super dope, like the the older stuff, but the new like kind of TikTok drift funk, like wave, whatever. It's like kind of played out at this point, but like actual true funk music is super sick. I really fuck with it a lot, but I think lots of the stuff people are like calling funk, like the drift funk that's on TikTok. It's it's kind of I don't know maybe I'm just like not I haven't dove deep enough into it but it kind of just has super played out to me it's like the same sound just over and over and over again which is dope for some music if you fuck with that like that's super sick like but for me it's it's not personally for me but yeah that's yeah, my opinion on funk I do quite enjoy Ryan Celsius's YouTube channel is I guess what I'm trying to say is um if you're familiar with mm. Ryan Celsius I like his videos I'm not, I'm not yeah it's it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I've given him a shout out in here before. We got to get him on the. I don't think he'll come on the podcast. He's not really a chatty guy. It doesn't seem like. But yeah, one day. <laughs> um, the question from Tropes Seven 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 is: uh, My question is, does Kmo have any more music with Small Mall? Um, no, I don't have any more music with Small Mall. Um, it would, it would be cool to work with them in the future. I'd love to work with Small Mall. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and then I wanted to make an apology to um, random F at kid uh, for mispronouncing your name. I'm pretty sure you were just 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 trolling me, but <laughs> in case for whatever reason I was not, my apologies. 
Um, but yeah, is there anyone you, you want to shout out, Kamo? I mean, I think we can probably wrap it up around here. Oh, hang on. Ran- Random if at kid 811 says, Kamo, what's your favorite Leroy song? Oh, my favorite Leroy song. Um, I l- They got some long titles. I really like um, I'd Love It When the Stupid Boys Come Around or what's that? What's that other Leroy song called? I don't know. All the Leroy songs are sick. I love Leroy so much. Um, oh, yeah. World Sour is Honey. That's a really good one. Shout out Leroy. We love Leroy. Awesome. But yeah, if I'm going to put if I'm going to shout out anyone else right now that you need to listen to. There's this band called the Sundays. They're older, but I listen to them a lot right now. If you haven't checked, if you haven't heard of them, you should check them out. They got some cool music. Traditional spelling, like the Sundays, like the day of the yeah, week. Yeah, the day Sundays, yeah. Okay, no funny letters upside down. No, no funny. <laughs> funny <Funniness. laughs> okay, cool. That's just simple. I, we got to be clear on this because, you know, there's yeah, a lot of that's stuff. True. That's true, yeah. Um, I have a question on behalf of that girl, Eris. She didn't ask this question, but it's more of a question that I think would be an interesting question to ask you. Last minute, what's your, do you, what's your opinion of drum and bass, and do you have a favorite drum and bass song? Mm, drum Most and bass. Questions. Sorry. <laughs> Yes. Um, I, I love drum and bass. Drum and bass is really sick. I haven't really listened to like dove that deep into actual like drum and bass music. So I don't know if I could say it, my favorite song off the top of my head, but, um, I, I, I should probably listen to more drum and bass because I love, I've like, every time I've heard it, especially live too. And just like classic drum and bass, it's, it's, it's really dope. And like jungle too. Love that. I love that shit so much. It's, it's an inspiration to me. Like, I think uh, Dirty Bird or Gum and Days God too. They they both are like some newer artists who are making jungle music that inspires me. So I definitely did like dive deeper and check out older drum and bass. I think Mala is really sick. Mm. Um, I think I've heard a couple songs from them. They make sick music. So yes. Well, that girl Eris has a fire DMB playlist. If um, she's happy to share it, she is a mod. So if she's willing to share yeah, this pod uh, this... Share your bass playlist. i'd love to i'd love to check it out yeah um and and i asked that mainly because um yeah like you obviously used the amen break beat in uh gloves mm-hmm. and that's one of the best break beats of all time that's true probably is the best break beat yeah that's definitely top five no mm-hmm. question uh, okay we got sure. another one if we're gonna we're gonna kind of wrap this up in five more minutes but um Random F at Kid eight one one. Just to be sure, I'm getting that right. Kamo, who's your favorite dubstep producer? I, I feel like you kind of answered that one, but I don't know if Skrillex qualifies as dubstep anymore. Yeah, I don't think Skrillex really counts as dubstep anymore. But James Blake, classic dubstep, old James Blake dubstep is super sick. Um, yeah, but like rhythm dubstep or whatever the new kind of crazy bass dubstep that's happening right now i think sizzy is the best um they have like super sick tunes that it's like blurring the lines between pop and like crazy heavy dubstep they have some crazy dope remixes on their side accounts too and they've done some shit for um remixes for me too super cool stuff oh cool they did a remix for you yeah they've done it they've done a couple remixes like on their on their second account you can see a bunch of like there's stuff where they sample my vocals or whatever yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's really that's dope. super dope. Um, mm-hmm. Could definitely check that out. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel yeah, like dubstep, dubstep's kind of, I don't know, maybe this is not correct, but it feels like dubstep and drum and bass, for, as a matter of fact, are really enjoying our renaissance right now. There's like kind of like a yeah. new wave. For sure. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of it on TikTok too, like especially drum and bass. I'm hearing TikTok stuff. So TikTok has like crazy power, man. It's like... Putting, pe- putting younger people onto a lot of like older music and a lot of new music coming out of that space too. Yeah, it's dope. Absolutely. But I mean, uh, yeah, this comes up on almost every every interview we do is, is just talking about TikTok and how, and you even addressed it a little bit as like, you know, sometimes social media is kind of crazy. It can get mm. out of hand really yeah. fast. But at the same time, it's also equally as powerful as putting on and exposing us to like really great new things or old things. Mm-hmm. Do you have any specific opinion about that or navigate? Yeah, I think TikTok, like when it's used correctly and like um, for artists who are trying to promote on TikTok, it's like 
it's a really good way to get people to hear music because the TikTok algorithm is like really powerful and it transitions, uh, it translates over to streaming services very, um, very quickly, especially if your song's like super good and people want to check it out. But yeah, I have a lot of friends who have like gotten a lot of success off of TikTok, which is crazy because you just like share a video with your song and it's like you can immediately get offers from like every major label in the world like trying to to sign you just off of a TikTok. Even like, sometimes the song's not even out yet and you're getting hit up by like every major label in the world trying to sign you because your song's popping on TikTok. Like I think it's super dope. I think it's really hard. Um, labels who are trying to like get into doing TikTok for the artists, it's hard to manufacture like a viral moment, I feel, um, because it's like kind of something that happens naturally. I'm sure there's probably a few examples where it's it's worked and they've manufactured kind of a success through TikTok, but I think TikTok it's like it's it's super culture driven and like um, stuff can just like be viral for no reason. Like there would just be like songs that gain a huge following on TikTok even if they're super old or like tiny artists. It can just it's it's really powerful and I think it's uh, I think it's really cool. But yeah. but at the same time, like going viral could be kind of bad, right? Like throw that's back true. Yeah, two thousand twelve, like thirteen or whatever, Harlem Shake, right? Like look at that. Like oh, yeah. I feel like that was so bad for Bauer in, in so many ways because it defined his career, right? Yeah, exactly. If you if you have a song that like gets giant on TikTok, hundreds of millions of streams, it's like people and you drop something next, and then it's like doesn't sound exactly like that song. People are gonna be like, "What is this? I'm not gonna listen to this." Like. I only want this one song and which is hard. Cause it's like, if you, I guess the term would be like a one hit wonder. Like if it's sadly that happens, people like you can have a really big hit, but then it just like, doesn't translate over to your other music. Um, I think people who have thought like, sometimes people are like, Oh, this is going to be another one hit wonder, but they can break out of it and kind of, um, they can like continue to be successful even after having a giant viral set. like Lil Nas X. Like he had the Old Town Road song that was like crazy popular, and I'm sure a lot of people thought like he was just going to be a one hit wonder and he'd be gone. But he's still making like crazy music, still super um, top like in the game right now. He's he's dropping really cool shit, and I think he he found a way to like totally continue that momentum forward into his newer shit. Yeah, but yeah, with Bauer for Harlem Shake, yeah, that's like. If your stuff gets used in like a meme like that, sometimes it can it could totally like you just be known as like the Harlem Shake guy, and then I guess that's what's happened. But yeah, I fuck with Bauer really a lot. I love Bauer's music. Same. Super cool producer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the thing that was like kind of sad is like he's obviously so much more than the Harlem Shake, and it's like if that's all yeah, people exactly. know for, like, well, you're lost really. But I do feel yeah, for him sure. in that way, and it, yeah, I think it, like he's putting out new music now. It's great. It's like fantastic music and. Yeah, I hope he can redefine that. And I think Lil Nas X is a great example of that too. Like, that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And on that, would uh, is Kamo ever going to sign to a major label? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. Nothing's off the table, honestly. Like, I'm I'm down for anything. If you want to come for me with an offer, if you want to talk to me about that, sure, whatever. Like, I've um, I've definitely talked to a couple labels that have been pretty dope. But uh, right now, I'm still independent at the moment. So if one of you A&Rs out there thinks you got a really dope um, connection, like you want to work with me, like feel free to hit me up, hit up my manager. Like I'm down. I'm down for whatever. Nothing's off the table for me, honestly. That's dope. It's got to be on your terms though, right? It's got to be. On my terms, yeah. I'm keeping not the masters, sign. keeping the publishing. Keeping the pub, keeping the masters, not signing a 360. Like I'm, you got to let me do my own videos, my brother. <laughs> Yes, yo, that's yeah. the team. That's like like the the OVO team or something. That's the team right there. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Hey, well, look, um, I want to thank you so much for your time, um, Kmo, and uh, you know, shout out, shout out you, shout out what you're doing, shout out the family that supports you. Shout too. out to Fun Step, my yeah. homies, Fun Step. Um, shout out, the shout people. out to everyone. Shout out to Matt Cut Corners from Serato. <laughs> shout out to Serato for hooking. You hooked me up with all the Serato shit. Thank you so much. Like. Yeah, shout out Serato. Thank you so much for having me. It's amazing. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm really excited about what happens next. And uh, you know, thank you to everyone who tuned in on the in the chat today. Um, I think that's kind of it, though. Hey, like, is there? That's it. That's kind of a wrap. So um, yeah, yeah, we'll be back next week. But um, stay tuned for more. <laughs>